You know that amazing feeling of having filled out your planner and thinking you might actually have your life together? I know that feeling is pretty hard to come by and it doesn't last long. Believe me, as a full-time working mom of four young kids, I know how hard it is to squeeze everything in and juggle the many moving parts of your life. But in this video, I'm so excited to flip the camera around and really walk you through how I filled out my fall 2022 planner because it turned out so great and it really is giving me that incredible peace of mind thinking that this might actually be feasible, right? If we haven't already met, big welcome. I'm Amber with Solutions for Simplicity and the mission of this entire channel is to help you do more and stress less. Life is so crazy, believe me, I know, but that doesn't mean that you have to be. And so I love sharing weekly videos on planning, productivity, and purposeful living to really enable you to free up more time for who and what you love. Subscribe if you haven't already and let's dive straight in. I mentioned in another video that this is the planner I am using for fall of 2022 and I could not be happier with how the golden coil customization process worked. I am in love with this planner. First thing, you can see the color code that I put in here for indicating all the different categories that are relevant to my life. I use these colors to denote tasks or events and other things so that when I flip to a page, right, I can more easily see, here's an example, right? Just right off the bat, I can aesthetically look at this and see what is going on for the different parts of my life. So helpful. Now I've mentioned before that I love using markers for planning things out, but I actually found that the markers kind of bled through. So that's why for this planner, I am just sticking with regular ballpoint pens. I always recommend that you have a bunch of different colors, highlighters, and good old whiteout so that you can cross over and start again. Then I found this handy little tray at Dollar Tree and I keep all of these right up over on my desk so that I can pull them out and use them to plan without having to dig around in my desk drawer when that time comes. I will post some of my favorite planner accessories down below. So as I mentioned in that other video, I got to customize the first page here and these are the quotes that I just love to be reminded of. Here, I am using this space for some business ideas as far as promotions or other events related to Solutions for Simplicity. I haven't yet come to fill out my goals for fall of 2022. Let me know down below if you would be interested in a video for that, but these goal setting pages are so helpful. So because of my busy summer, I didn't get July planned out, but I'm gonna skip forward and I wanna show you these handy tabs that I found off of Amazon. Big shout out to Andrea for pointing me in the direction of these. I highly recommend them. And that way I can easily flip to each page and each month in the planner. As I mentioned in my other video, that was one of the downsides of the Golden Coil Planner. It didn't come with those tabs, but this was a very easy solution. And I love the way this turned out. So if we flip to the first month here, August, I just want to show you again how the color coding looks and that I can look at the entire month at once. This page has all of the dates pre-established, um, right? Laid out. And then on the next page, I chose to have a blank calendar that I can use. And what I'm doing here let me flip to September because that's a better example, right? I am telling myself what kinds of activities I'm going to be doing on different days. Tuesdays and Thursdays are my big teaching days, but then I have a bunch of time allocated just for research, in particular writing my book. A few days here and there where I will be working on my business and everything has to be condensed and consolidated into those few days. A few, you know, family days like Labor Day, for instance, and another day where my kid's school is closed. So I I know right off the bat that those are days that I'm not going to be able to get work done, but I want to plan around it. What I will eventually come back and do, again, let me know if you would like another video on this in the future, but I will come back and actually do some time blocking where I put in the specific tasks I plan to work on on these days in each of these categories. As I was editing this, I realized I forgot to show you the coolest part, which is the daily schedule that I've designed for myself. 
So this is nothing fancy. I just made this table for myself in Microsoft Word. Up at the top, I have indicated the theme that each day is hopefully going to follow. Again, this is just the way that I can batch tasks later on. I have my time blocks here on the left hand side based on the general flow of my day and you know what hours I can and cannot work. Then you can see how some things are kind of the same every day, like my morning routine. If you're interested on a video where I show you what I do in the morning, please let me know in the comments. Then getting ready for school and for work, taking kids to school, which thankfully my husband helps with on certain days, driving into campus, right? We've got to remember to allocate that drive time, but I try and always use this productively by listening to podcasts or you know, informational YouTube videos, talking with family members, etc. Then this is my first big work block chunk. And so that is filled with teaching responsibilities on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I will use it for some business time on Mondays and then research writing my book on Wednesdays and Fridays. A little bit of time for lunch. Oftentimes I still work through my lunch, but at least this way I have some flexibility and, you know, give myself a little chance to decompress. Another pretty solid work chunk in the afternoon. And I have mentioned before, I actually have an upcoming video, but I use the Pomodoro time management system to work in these 25 minute increments that allows me to get so much done in just a little bit of work time. So I will be releasing that video soon. But anyway, again, some work time in the afternoon, rounding everybody up, coming home, having family time, and then in the evenings, using a little bit of time for quality time with my husband, good old prayers, a little bit of work time for my business. And on Mondays, just try and stay flexible and make sure that I am setting the week up for success. So again, this is really simple and you know, the truth is that every day is going to be different as nice as it is and as great as it makes me feel mentally to have it all laid out on paper. We know that different things come up, unexpected events happen, things get thrown off, but still, this is a really helpful way that I try and plan out my life in order to make sure I know what I'm supposed to be doing, not just on different days, but throughout each day so that I don't find myself kind of lost in that state of paralysis with all the things I could or should be doing. I know what goes into each block and then I can make a future video on what I actually time block into these different slots. Next up, I have yet to fill out the project pages here, but this is going to be so helpful for underscoring the big things that I need to focus on on each month. So whether that's teaching related, research related, service activities for my university, or of course things for Solutions for Simplicity, I will list those projects out and then I can itemize the action steps that need to be taken for their completion. All part of the goal process as I'm so adamant about. I love the weekly layout because I have the week at a glance, which is so helpful for me for ensuring that nothing slips through the cracks and I don't forget something big that's coming up. But then here I have to-do list space where I can write in various tasks and then cross them off, really get the physical satisfaction of crossing them off as they're done. Then I didn't use it this week, but the blank dot grid or grid paper that's here is so helpful. I plan to use this for tracking my time, maybe doing some other habit tracking, lots of things you can do with these pages. I should mention that, I don't know if you can see, but I took this little ruler from my day designer planner and I stuck it in here. I love being able to just quickly flip open to where I'm at in my planner. And that was another thing that this planner was missing, but you know, easy solution. I just used it from a previous planner. As we flip forward, every month just has my schedule, but then again, I've planned out the entire fall in terms of what days I plan to be working on different things. And I know that this isn't necessarily the way that the fall is going to play out. Unexpected things always come up, especially when you are a mom and your kids have their activities or get sick or school has you know, weather related closures or other things. But in my mind, it just feels amazing to have it all laid out 
and really, really just think to myself ahead of time about what I'm going to be doing when so that I don't ever sit down and kind of wonder what I should be doing on a given day. I have the plan all put forward and I can then be very intentional as well as maximize my productivity by batching tasks according to that day's theme, research, business, or family. All right, flipping back. I've only filled out this planner through January, and then I am already listing in February some of the important dates and things that I have coming up. I love this planner and you know may continue to use it at that point, but chances are that I will flip to another planner and start a new one in the spring because I just am that person that really gets into planning and so I usually get two planners a year, one in January, one for the academic year. And so that way I can really just conceive of my life in kind of six month chunks or so. So since I'm not planning on using the second half of the planner, what I have done is divide up the space according to different categories where I am keeping my to-do list. This is just gonna be a running list of all the tasks that I think of, and then I can come back in and schedule them directly into the to-do list for the week that it's applicable, right? Like this. Now, I didn't use anything fancy here. I didn't think ahead of time to get dividers that would be, you know, really nice to have in place, but I just grabbed sticky notes and used different colors for kids, personal, household, academic, business, and other things to buy, right? So this way I can then keep those running lists and Anytime I think of a new thing to be done, I can add it to the list here, and then I will highlight it as I have either completed the item or added that task to a particular week's to-do list. But I am loving that this is like my brain dump space. It is so, so helpful to ensure that we get all of those random thoughts and tasks out of our head, down on paper, do that brain dump and then prioritize it and really go through the tasks in order of what is most essential to complete. And that is something that I do on a weekly basis as I've described in this video and the way that I use my Pinpoint Your Priorities notepads. Here you can just see various tasks. Obviously I will be adding to each of these as time goes on. Then in the back, I've got some extra paper and that's it. In addition to my amazing golden coil planner, let me show you the other two planning essentials that I am using this fall. The first is the Silk and Sonder Monthly Wellness Journal. This is a subscription product that is just incredible. It's full of so many amazing things. I've reviewed it in this video, but seriously, so helpful for habit tracking, keeping up with your mood, and so much more, right? Journaling for mental health. Very, very big on this for self-care. Then, if you didn't already know, I have an Etsy shop where I make a whole bunch of motivational merchandise like these journals that I use for really kind of planning out my thoughts, brainstorming, making those big long lists of random ideas. I keep this in my purse so that I can pull it out and just write down anything and everything I think of and then transfer it over to my planner every night and certainly every week when I do my actual planning session. If you don't already have a regular time of the week that you sit down and plan things out for one to two weeks at a time, then check out this video because it has a lot of ideas on how to do that and why it's so important. I usually sit down and plan the week ahead on Fridays when I'm kind of burnt out and just ready to think of something else and not getting much work done anyway. Sometimes that all gets pushed back to Monday morning, but I, tr I don't usually have time on Sundays because those are busy family days and I'd like to know my marching orders ahead of time. If you want even more on my proven planning method, then check out my ultimate guide to planning. It's full of science-backed tips for scheduling things in, not only to get them all done, but to keep your sanity in the process. So invaluable, and it's the method that I have relied on for years. I seriously swear by it, and you can check out others' reviews as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you got value. If you want more of these kinds of videos and you wanna see more of how I plan out my week, my life, my month, 
my everything, right? Then comment down below, plan with me, plan with me. And that will tell me to make more plan with me videos. I would love to post those on a regular basis. I have so much other good stuff coming up for you. Again, subscribe for weekly videos on planning, productivity, and purposeful living. I'll see you back soon. Thanks for being here. Bye.